friends, welcome to Exploration Place. My name is Jessica, and today we are going to be talking about precipitation. But what is precipitation? Think about that for a second. Usually when we hear precipitation, we think of rain. So let's start with rain. What makes a raindrop? Well, a raindrop happens with a very special start of either dust or dirt or pollen. Mmm, yummy. Makes you think twice about sticking out your tongue and trying to catch a raindrop. But that dust will go all the way up into the atmosphere, and as it gets higher and higher and higher, water vapor sticks to it, kind of like glue. So I've got some Play-Doh here. We've got our dust particle. It starts to stick to it. Now, as it keeps building and adding on that water vapor, it's gonna get heavier and heavier, and eventually, it's gonna get too heavy to stay aloft in the air. And that is when it starts to fall down to the ground in a beautiful little shape of a raindrop. So what about winter time? We usually don't think about precipitation in the winter, but there's a very fun one that comes to mind, and I think all of you enjoy it as well, snow days. Who doesn't like a snow day? Raise your hand if you like snow days. Oh yeah, snow days are the best. But snow starts very similar to a raindrop. Again, dust, dirt, or pollen has to be high up in the atmosphere. And then that water vapor is going to collect around it. But this time something else is happening to it. What do you think might be the difference between a summer rain and a winter snowfall? Hmm, talk to your partner and see if you can decide what might be the difference. Exactly, friends, it's temperature. Temperature has everything to do as to whether or not we have our raindrops or our snow falling. But did you know it goes even further than that? Because a snowflake has different shapes and the shapes are determined by the temperature. The first type of snowflake you might be familiar with. This is actually called a dendrite. And the dendrite has some very unique shape. So we start in the middle where our pollen would be or our dust. So let's grab our marble here. We'll start in the middle, put a nice base of water vapor around it. Ta-da! There is our piece of dirt or dust or pollen. Yummy. Now it's going to continue to stay aloft in the atmosphere, but it's still going to be cool enough for more water vapors to stick to it and it'll freeze into a crystal structure. So if you can imagine, stretch your arms out, it's really rigid, it forms these arms that are branching. Now there are six arms to my dendrite, so let's make six arms. So there's one. So there's six different branches. Now if it's really, really cold and there's a lot of wind movement up in the atmosphere, it's still going to stay up there and it's going to continue to build. So that's where we see those little branches coming off and all the different shapes that you see with snowflakes. So we'll add a few little branches towards the top. So our snowflake is going to be circulating up in our cloud for quite some time. It's starting to look more like a snowflake. One more. So this branching structure that we have Again, it's called a dendrite, and it's the most common snowflake because it usually happens at temperatures that we see quite a bit in the Midwest, between 20 and 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So we see a lot of dendrites, which is why it's the first snowflake that comes to mind usually when we think about them. But it's not the only one. There are some really fascinating shapes that can come with snowflakes too. All right, so the next kind that is very common it's called a plate. Now there's two types of plates. There's a solid plate, and then there's some that have designs to them. So these are two different types of plates that also sometimes fall at the same time as our dendrite. They also have a similar shape. How many sides do you see on my plates? Yeah, there's six sides again. Interesting. So let's see if we can make a solid plate first. So very important, we need our dust, we need our dirt, we need that yummy part in the middle that's gonna collect that water vapor high up in the atmosphere. There we go. So now we've got our dust particle, and now it's going to start to freeze and take on a very special shape. Does anyone remember how many sides I need to make? 
six sides, very good. So this is a solid plate. If you'll notice, there's not really a lot of patterns that's happening around my dust particle. It's pretty solid all the way across, so it's easier to remember. But we like to see some pretty plates too. So if we were to take it and actually add in a little bit of design, that is happening in the atmosphere as well. And it all has to do with how it freezes and then refreezes. So a solid plate might continue to go further down in the cloud where it's a little warmer, melt a little bit, and then get sucked right up back up into the top where it's really cold and it'll freeze again. So you get these really beautiful patterns happening. So I tried to make mine in here squished through a little bit. There we go. We'll put some holes in it. There, that's a beautiful plate. So this is another form of a snowflake. And again, it happens during the same time as when we get dendrites. So it all has to do on where the water vapor is at collecting on that dust particle and how high it is up in the cloud. But believe it or not, these aren't the only kinds. Let's take a look at another type of snowflake. Now this type of snowflake is one that's associated with a dry snow. Now wait, let me think about that. Water vapor is wet. Dry snow. Hmm. What do you think might be causing the snow to be dry as compared to really wet? I'll give you a hint, it starts with a T. Temperature. Everything is because of temperature. So now if we have a dry snow, it means that the snow does not have very much water vapor in it anymore. It's all frozen solid. So that crystallized structure is no longer going to have it moving up and down and cooling. Instead, it's very solid, it's very hard, and when it falls to the ground, it forms almost like a powder. If you've ever been skiing out in Colorado, they have a lot of the dry snow, where it's very powdery, it's very soft, you can pick it up in your hands, throw it, and it goes everywhere. It's a lot of fun. So let's look at the structure that has to do with the dry snow. Now the dry snow is one that forms in two ways. You can have columns, which are tall, thick, and they usually have either a solid part or a hole in the middle that kind of squeezes in on both sides, or needles, very thin, very long. So let's make one of each. So the first one is our column. So let's make a cylinder first, because remember, they're going to be a lot thicker and a lot taller. Pat down our cylinder there. And then how many sides do you think we need for our column? Take a look. Hmm. Six, exactly. So let's make our column into six sides. All right, better check to make sure that I did it right. How many sides do we have? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Excellent. All right, so now that we have our column, it's still pretty thick. So it's nice and thick here, but it's all solid all the way around. What do you think might be in the middle of my column? I didn't tell you. Yeah, it's that dirt and dust and pollen. That still is necessary to form any snowflake. So it's still in the middle and the water vapor sticks around it to form our column. So there's another kind of column though. The one that I have next to it has a little bit of a hole in the middle. These are pretty fun to make. They don't go all the way through, but it pokes all the way a little bit into the center almost like a donut. So you'll see it doesn't go all the way through, but it does have a hole in the center there that still forms around that dust and dirt and pollen. So the other kind is a needle. Now needles, again, they form around dust, dirt, and pollen, but it's even smaller particles. So not as big as mine, it's itty bitty. And they form long needle-like shapes. So we'll make ours a little bit bigger so you can see it here. But as they fall, they fall on top of each other. And again, when it does, it creates a dry snow. So there's not much moisture there. Here we go, we've got needles. So what about a wet snow? We talked about dry snow. We talked about our dendrites and our plates. What would be a wet snow? Hmm. Can you think, would the temperature have to be warmer or colder to get a wet snow? Talk with your partner, see if you can decide if it would be colder or warmer. 
Exactly, it has to be warmer to have a wet snow because you need that snowflake to melt a little bit. As it's melting, it's usually lower in the cloud base or even falling from the cloud. And if you have a snowflake that's a little bit moist and it's falling next to another one that's a little bit moist, what do you think they might like to do? Stick together. Exactly. Have you ever seen big snowflakes that are falling from the sky? They don't usually have that dendrite shape to them that we were talking about. But if you look really closely, you'll actually see that it's comprised of a lot of dendrites that are interlocked between their branching arms. They've stuck together and refrozen on their way down to the ground. So that's a wet snow. The wet snow is really great for building snowmen. Lots of fun outside. So hopefully we will have some snow coming up this year, but I have a challenge for you. When you do see snow, See if you can find a dark piece of paper. I've got black here, but you can do blue, brown, doesn't matter as long as it's dark. Go ahead and go outside and see if you can catch a snowflake. Once you do, look very close and see if you can determine, is it a dendrite? So one that looks just like this with branching arms. Is it a plate? Looks very solid. Sometimes it has some structure inside as well, but it's very hexagon in shape. Is it a needle or is it a column? So you'll have to look very close. You might even need to have a magnifying glass to see, but hopefully you can see those different shapes in the snowflakes and think about what's causing them, how the temperature might be affecting the snow in the clouds up above. Thanks for visiting friends and I hope you had fun learning all about snowflakes and enjoy your next snowfall. Bye friends.